Hello, I'm back. Um, I'm going to go over some of the things that have changed uh, and, and have been modified since I started producing the AOM Pro Pump Kit um, for a couple of months. Uh, there's a lot to go over. There's a lot of things that have been small changes. There are a lot of things that have been pretty big changes that I think are pretty interesting to discuss. And then I'll go over the idea of file sales, or at least getting files out. Um, but yeah, let's get through, let's get right into it. Let's get into all the individual parts and see what's changed and, and uh, what's not. All right, so as much as I know, you probably love looking at my face. Uh, this, this angle is just gonna be a lot easier for me to discuss what's going on. As much as this tablecloth may be distracting, hopefully you can see the parts and I'll bring them up close so you can get a good look. Um, but the major reason why I changed a lot of these files is to try to get to support free as much as possible. Um, the kit right now has zero supports, and I say that with an asterisk because one part technically has supports, but it's very simple. Um, a lot of the other supports I had before were very uh, complex supports that either required custom work or suppressing a lot of supports and it made it really complex if someone was to download these files and print it on their own machine. Um, so now either you print without support or you print with standard uh, procedural support material and, and you should have no problems. So I'm going to go through again all the parts, what's changed, what hasn't. Um, so I guess I'll go over what's like either the smallest change or what hasn't changed first. So the largest part is the muzzle. Um, this is like our failed print so there shouldn't be a little bit of problem there but like otherwise yeah it, this is just an example of this part hasn't changed at all um, zero supports from the beginning which is actually pretty successful for as big of a part and as complex of a part it is um, the bolt spacers haven't changed at all actually I kind of extended them just a slight bit recently but otherwise they print just fine with a, I print them with a brim at the bottom, so they hold on to the print bed well. But these haven't changed. The front adapter hasn't changed at all. Uh, still the same process to print that, no supports either. Um, and the jam door. And the jam door is my asterisk. So I, I found a way to print it without supports, but it just was too thin and didn't really come out as well as I wanted it to. Uh, so, this, again, another failed print, but this is a, just an example of the part. Um, there's just supports here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, supports there that you have to peel off, and then you have supports on the sides you have to pull off. But otherwise, it's a really, really simple part uh, to clean up. Now, I guess for, for the parts that have had slight changes, um, we'll get into those. So the, the kind of foregrip that I designed, which I've now kind of attached... I don't know if you can see it, but I've attached spud grip onto the side of it. Um, and basically, I haven't really changed anything besides adding more lettering to it. So adding the spud grip there, and then I made the hole slightly deeper. And that's that's the only thing that's changed on that. Um, the back. So again, another failed print, but this is the only example I have because most of these just go out, to, out the door. Um, but I used to print this standing up. So print bed is here, so it would stand up like that, and there would be support material built here down. So the only way it would stand up straight is from like this edge here. So it had a tendency to wobble off if it wasn't really well secured onto the print bed, <clears throat> which as you can see would cause a lot of uh, print failures. So to make this easier for myself and for other people, um, I've taken this edge, so this edge here is flat. I've put a chamfer on it. So I've actually just this edge here, I've turned into a triangle and then kind of uh, made that transition smooth. So that way you can print it down. So the print bed is here, print it like this. You can print it without supports. It's a much stronger part now. Um, the, the top may not be as clean or may not be like have as nice of a finish, um, but you don't need any supports. It's stronger and it'll probably uh, I don't think it'll take less time. It actually will, because there's no supports. Uh, so all in all, that's a much better executed print. I think I was just being, uh, I was just stuck in my old ways for not wanting to change that for that long. Now we're gonna go into kind of some more, um, some larger changes. I'm gonna go into this one, it's the largest change, and I feel like I just need to get it out of the way, but the pump grip. 
has been a huge thing for me. Um, this is the original pump grip, um, which is printed in this orientation. I made a YouTube video kind of explaining most of this, so I won't go into super detail, um, but it, it prints in this orientation and it had these grooves, which as you can see, you can see the light kind of shining through it. That's how thin it is. You can see my finger. Um, and on like the initial five or so runs, I got one person had theirs break when they, I don't know if it was either they just used a stronger spring or they used some sort of angled or vertical or something in between foregrip and between lowering the, the, um, the lever uh, kind of uh, angle from, from the main pump grip down combined with the spring, uh, it sheared off the bottom and like broke in half. So obviously I didn't want that. I, I, but before I reprinted them another part, I wanted to make sure it was a lot stronger. So um, the groove that was initially at the top uh, was kind of for user semantics to give a different grip orientation, but I didn't, everyone I asked, didn't, they didn't find use out of it. I didn't personally find use out of it. And with this grip orientation, it just, it doesn't really give you much traction anyway. Um, so it was a thinner area. So I, I just kind of removed it and thickened that whole spot up. So as you can see now, it's much thicker um, than it was before at that top. And then I moved the kind of my store name up there because it was just an easier spot to put that. It was really clean. There was, it looked pretty boring up there now that there was like no um, cool, cool uh, diamond pattern or anything. Um, and then I, I added these ridges on the side, which add for, for traction, for, for areas for you to grip. Uh, but also, uh, it, it thickens up the part. So hopefully, you know, it wasn't going to break as easily because I widened it and added these kind of striations there. But again, it was printed in this orientation, which is just objectively not as strong as printing in this orientation. But, you know, as, as I mentioned in that other video I, I made, um, printing the part in this orientation with the muzzle printed in the same orientation those two rubbing against each other was gonna make a horrible noise that I, I didn't want from the beginning. So that's where I made, and this is the pump grip I have on my blaster, which I've used at a war and it worked just, worked great. Um, I've added these kind of spacers in here that you had to glue into place uh, and they're printed. So the, the pump grip is now printed this orientation. These are printed in the opposite orientation. So when they slide along the muzzle, they don't make, the sound is really, really reduced. Um, so that was probably the biggest change I've made, which also uh, makes this have zero support ne uh, necessary. Um, and I'll go into why that is. There's a, there's a little trick I, I use to get that. But, um, and then the spacers don't require any support. They need a brim, but um, pretty much every part that needs a brim is, is notified in my file set. But everything else you can just print normally. And... And then I'll go into kind of, oh, before that, let me go into the back adapter. So um, I got a Lynx kit from Orion Blasters from Dan. And um, I noticed that the way he secures his barrel is with using O-rings. So I lovingly adapted that to this because I, what I had before is just, it was plastic um, filament, this back adapter onto the barrel. And that's what made the seal which was hard because every barrel was slightly different and every print can be slightly different. So like when I was sending these out to people, I was having to make sure this fit. And a lot of times I had to like sand or I had to really crank this in and I, it just doesn't feel very sophisticated. It doesn't feel very, you know, like thought through when you have that. And it's also plastic on metal, 3D printed plastic that is making a seal on, on metal, which isn't gonna be better than, you know, using any sort of gasket or O-ring. So. Um, what I have here are two O-rings. There's actually three O-rings that are used, but two O-rings and there's these ridges on the inside of the back adapter now. And what you do is you, you fit those in place. And now these O-rings seat inside the back adapter. And that is actually what um, seals your barrel off. These are probably not gonna fit because of course not. Um, there we go. Uh, seals your barrel off and then it seals off that orange kind of muzzle piece inside the blaster really really tightly um, so it creates a much more um, successful seal uh, and it holds the barrel much tighter so you're not going to have it kind of falling out or anything so long gone are the need of like teflon tape electrical tape gluing uh, this should hold great i i don't have the other o-ring to put on the back but i'm not going to showcase that anyway but there's a, a wider o-ring that goes there um, so as you can see, those are seated. And then the barrel I have here would just, 
wiggle that in there and then that is making a really nice seal so that's great I, i've loved using that and that's something brand new so the kits i'm producing now come with that and then that's again in the file set lastly um we're gonna go over the changes that are mostly um or actually let me go over the middle so the middle piece um i didn't bring it down but it used to have um so it has this section here that comes down that connects with the actually i have it on the i have it on the am pro so as you can see um the front of it comes down and kind of makes up the the front of this groove that the slide sits on and then the back is there and what i had to do before is i had to make support material that would come all the way up from here up and make sure that that printed correctly which is fine um but you had to block a ton of support on the inside here that would get created and a ton of support in here that would get created and it was just a mess so what I decided to do is I just removed that entire front piece and made it just an angled piece because it, it, realistically this is being held in place and then it's being held in place here so it shouldn't lift up anyway. Um, so now you can print this, you know, with, with this being print bed, print this without support uh, and, and makes this a much, much easier print to get through. Uh, again, this has a brim at the bottom so that, because it's a long print, it's a kind of skinny print. Uh, so it's really useful to make sure your prints stay on the print bed. Now lastly, or either the the pump grip which i've mentioned and then the stock and the slides now the stock and the slides haven't changed at all but what's changed is how i print them so before the the uh the stock required a lot of custom supports and a lot of support suppression especially inside here usually because i printed out a 45 degree like this and there would be supports that would get created here and, and sometimes there'd be supports in like areas in here and I would have to suppress them, which was a pain, especially if, again, I'm sending these out to people. So what I actually ended up making is small little extrusions in my files on Infusion and combining them with the part, but making the joint that they're combined with so small that they actually break off um, as soon as they come off the print bed. Uh, which I've tried really hard to make sure they haven't broken out the print bed so I can show it here. But here's an example with the pump grip. Um, there are these two stands here and here that make sure that this area prints nice and smooth and doesn't droop or anything. And those literally just break off like that and like that. That's that's it. Um, and you might need an X-Acto blade or something, just like one run through to clean that up. But otherwise, that's as easy as that is. Um, the stock has a piece down here that just pops off like that and then it has two pieces right where the um kind of like stock uh kind of latch is for the actual stock to kind of latch in there so that breaks off just fine and that one breaks off just fine and then there are these two sections on the back just to make sure that the stock piece uh prints correctly and doesn't tip over or anything these i found are a little bit harder to come off but again if you if there's anything left behind you can just take an exacto blade and just trim off the excess and again if you have a stock on here anyway you're not going to even notice it um but those probably again as as is always as is tradition uh the minute you start recording something it doesn't work as you want it to but there we go so you can see there's a little bit of like a color differential there and that's a little bit of this material still on there but you can just take an exacto blade and clean that off it's it's really unnoticeable once you do that and of course clean off that edge because again this is a brim that's been put on here and lastly is the slides and the slides are unchanged completely but um instead of suppressing a ton of support material again i've done that same thing so there are these two stems that hold up the pin here and then the area that the actual metal uh, pin goes into. Let me actually break these apart. And breaks off like that. It's the first time I've actually done this with this part, so it's really nice. And then this one just breaks off super simple. Um, obviously, this is probably going to work better with pliers, but uh, I can do it with my hand just fine. And yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, these files I'm going to release on Etsy with hardware as well. Um, and so all you basically have to do now is just print to whatever infill you want to print at. Um, I use pretty standard print settings and everything kind of works just fine. So as long as you do that, 
you really should have no problem printing these parts um, because they, they really now um, are pretty simple to produce. So yeah, these, these are really interesting. Um, I'm not sure if anyone wants to know how these work or how to make these, but these are very crucial um, with parts like this that, that require kind of custom supports or custom areas to, to make them come out really easily. Um, so I, I asked some people on Discord, they were very helpful with getting there. Um, but yeah, so there's some cool stuff going on there. Um, outside of that, there are some other cool file changes as well. So um, I know uh, Ender saves the day on, I think, Reddit and definitely on Thingiverse has created a version of this stock with a buffer tube. So actually this stock love is removed and he used some sort of, I think AliExpress or Alibaba bought aluminum uh, buffer tube that either attaches or screws on to this part that he's changed. So that's available on his, hopefully he'll put it on his Thingiverse if it's not already there and that's a free file. Um, so, and I think he's also made a tack rail at the top. I'll have to see. I don't know. That's uh, Some people have asked about a Picatinny rail on the top that's different from M-Lock. But, um, yeah, so there's some changes up there. So there's some files that, that are definitely different. And I'm open to, to some kind of remixing of certain files depending on what you want. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all the changes I've got going on here. Um, so, yeah. Hope that uh, people enjoy that. Hope you got some, inf some information from there that may be useful for your build or, or just interesting information in general um but yeah that's it see you guys later